So here is the next phase of the uh, wildlife dip pools. And I've decided to do them in more bite-sized chunks for you. Because I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to make this, it's going to be a lot easier if I upload these individually in chunks that you can uh, better understand. Instead of me giving you a long winded description and you waiting around for me to dig out sections, etc., etc., and I'm not into editing, uh, video editing, so I'd rather uh, do it in a wanna. I'm going to show you in bite sized chunks just what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. So, today, uh, to, on today's video, I'm, I've, what I've already done is I've now removed the three books of Sempervirens, as you can see. Uh, that is likely to go back to grass. And I've marked out what I, uh, at the moment, consider a good shape. Now, I know it looks boring at this stage. It looks boring. It's just a yellow line. And it looks like an oblong and a boring oblong. <clears throat> but what you've got to remember is I need to allow at least a foot and a half beyond that so I need to come at least to here because I need to put the membrane or the pond liner over to that so it needs to go that far now the, although this looks small at the minute it is so uh, yeah as I said before three meters by probably two and a half meters at the moment just I've just stepped it out uh, and and that's what it is at the moment uh, the other thing you got to watch out for, I nearly brought me bloody neck over there then. <laughs> anyway, right. So what have I done? What have I done so far? So we've removed the plants. We've taken those out and there was quite a few in there. So it makes it look bigger. And the one thing I don't want this to be is become a monster, a monster pond. It's, you know, that little dustbin lid in there has as much wildlife in there as, as is needed. Uh, I've, in fact, this morning there's been uh, late season wasps visiting that already drinking from it uh, and what I'm trying to create is three different pools now once I've done today's work maybe I'll do another video immediately and show you how far I've got on this so uh, as I said what have I taken out I've taken out quite a few plants what have I added I've added back in this miscanthus and it's a giganteous type and it's called gilt edge it gets as tall as this one as I've shown you before which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for height at the back. I've then counterbalanced that height with the squatness of this rheum palmatum, which will look superb once this starts getting established. I've left room at the back there. That room's been left deliberately because I'm having a bit of a shufty around at the minute with this and I'm moving plants around. And as yet, I, don't, I haven't decided fully what's going in. I know two of the plants I am gonna put in here. Uh, one of those being this, as I've said before, this is my cutting of uh, the reed that I talked about, which is called Arundo Donax macrophylla. It's tiny at the moment, but that was a cutting. If you want to know how to take cuttings of these things, uh, just look up on my videos and you'll find just how I did that. And you'll see that very, that very plant, how it was when I took the cutting. Anyway, that aside, so that's going in there. Now, what I've got to allow for, I've got to allow plenty of room. And you, you, this is where a lot of people who are not used to doing this kind of thing get caught out. They tend to either underdo it or overdo it. Now, I need to allow that Arundo Donax, all that space you can see from that yellow line back to the fence to produce what I want, which is a big plant. Uh, in fact, let's show you again. I've shown you this before. Look up towards the van. You can see the parent plant there. And that's a good seven, eight foot tall. Uh, and it's a slow clumper. And it's fantastic. And it's going to do its job here. And it's going to look absolutely superb. And again, it's going to give you this almost tropical look, I guess, here. As you walk through this. And this is all adding to the interest of why I'm building this pond. It's not just for the wildlife. It's for my own entertainment. And to uh, show other people how to do these things. Uh, that's why I'm building it as well. But I did want it because I want more wildlife in the scad. And, I've, and as I've said, I've found a couple of hedgehogs running around and I'd like to provide something for them. And I know for a fact I'm going to get frogs jumping in and out. But it's not going to be your average pond. It is not going to be a pond in the traditional sense. I don't keep koi fish. I have no 
desire to keep koi fish or any type of fish in here it's simply for the wildlife how do we go about marking it out well here's a great thing that i've got let me show you this tin this is called quick line and it's what they use on the roads for marking out and you simply get that you shake it it's got a little ball bearing inside as you can hear and what you do is you shake it you grab it and you just simply spray down like that and you just do that if you don't go in first time go over a couple of times uh, go around it a couple of times so that you can see that line easily you don't want to be struggling now this isn't the final shape this this will be totally different by the time i've done it this is my initial guide to help me it won't be a boring rectangular pond it will alter as time goes on it will change as i dig it out um, i've got a bank here as i've said before or a slope it slopes down and it slopes to here so at the back of that yellow whatever i dig out of here i'm going to put back in there hopefully I'll, as i said i'll upload another video after this one and show you that as well tools i use simple spade this lawn edger i had made is believe it or not that lawn edger is made from a plow from the wheel on a plow uh, and the engineer that made me that cut that for me put me a decent sized foot plate on it and then made it all out of steel and the one thing that these things never have is wide enough handles so i've made sure that that's got a wide enough handle to be comfortable uh, and i'm i had, a, I had a, a local engineer make me that about five years ago four years ago maybe and it's fantastic and i love it and the bonus was he only charged me 20 quid that's <laughs> even better anyway so so here we go so here it is ignore that dustbin lid at the moment that's just giving me ideas at the moment uh, it's just a guide i will dig out some other three other sort of deeper bits which i will show you on the next video i will set about digging this out i will take up the turf remove it put it to the back turn it over put it there and over time it'll rot away but i'm allowing for changes as i go along and that's what you should do you should just allow for a few changes you know no one's perfect on the first go uh, i'm no different i will uh, i will want to make changes as i as i dig it out here's another view of it so you can see the yellow uh, and that's that's the initial size that i'm building it and they're the two tools that i shall be using today and that is all the tools i should be using we'll not go through the liner just yet we'll do that on another youtube so doing them in bite-sized chunks uh, and then this is the next phase talk to you on the next one ta-da